In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. In, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary and Louisa. In, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls. Giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification. Praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come reign on earth. Fiat. The Kingdom of My Divine Will in the Midst of Creatures Book of Heaven Volume 32 Part 8 August 6, 1933 How the Celestial Queen grew together with the Divine Will and how she possessed the Speaking Son Joys of God in the Creation of Man Power that he gave to him. I am always in the arms of the divine fiat, which now makes me pause in one of its works, now in another. It seems it wants to make me comprehend well what it did for love of us. So, while I was going around in its works, it stopped me in the act of the conception of the Virgin how the divine will had its first place in her and grew and diffused in those little members and how the tiny little queen herself grew. They both grew together. What a happy growth! What great prodigy! The divine will lowering itself enclosing itself in the littleness of the Holy Virgin to grow together with her. But while I was there stupefied, my dear divine teacher, surprising me, told me, My good daughter, making the celestial queen live in the divine fiat was the greatest act, the most heroic, of the most intense love, that our supreme being did. And as much as our goods are immense and innumerable, as we gave our will for it to live in her, we could give her nothing more, nor add anything else, because with it we gave her everything, and she formed within herself the font and the spring of all the divine goods as much as it is possible for a creature. Now, the tiny little sovereign, by growing together with our will, while growing, formed in her soul, in her heart, in her works and steps, many speaking sons, which spoke to us with voices of light and of irresistible love, 
they spoke to us extensively. They spoke to us of love. They spoke to us of our very divine being. They spoke to us of mankind. Her steps, her little hands, the beats of her heart spoke to us, reaching into our divine bosom with voice of light and speaking even inside of us. Her speaking never ceased because since our will lived in the celestial queen, her whole being was all speaking, not with human voices, but with arcane and divine voices, having always something to say, without ever being exhausted. More so, since the divine fiat is word, and operating word, creating word. How could her speaking cease if she held it in her power? Therefore, her speaking kept us besieged, captured, surrounded from all sides, occupied in such a way as to render itself irresistible and invincible for us to give her whatever she wanted. Her word was powerful and caused our power to surrender. It was gentle and sweet and caused our justice to bend. It was light and it imposed itself over our supreme being, over our love, over our goodness. In sum, there was nothing of us that would not sweetly bend at the powerful voices of this celestial creature. But while my sweet Jesus was saying this, he made me see the celestial queen, and from within her heart came out a sun which invaded the whole celestial court, the entire earth and its rays were formed of most refulgent light, of speaking voices that spoke to God, to the saints and the angels, to all the creatures of the earth. So my celestial mamma still possesses her continued speaking, her speaking son, which speaks to her God with voices of speaking light and loves him and glorifies him in a divine manner. It speaks to the saints and acts towards them as beatifying mother and bearer of joy to the whole celestial court. It speaks to the earth and as mother, she shows us the way to lead us to heaven. And my beloved Jesus added, See then what it means to live of divine will. One acquires the continuous acting, speaking, loving. What comes out from within my will possesses the operating, illuminating, and perpetuating virtue. And therefore they are triumphant acts which conquer God. After this, I continued my round in the acts of the divine fiat, and I paused in the creation of man, and I offered the very divine acts that it did in creating man, as well as those of innocent Adam, in order to impetrate the kingdom of the divine will. And my highest good Jesus continued telling me, My blessed daughter, as you offered our acts in creating man and those of innocent Adam to impetrate the kingdom of my divine will, you have repeated for us the joys that we felt in creating man 
and you have formed new bonds of union between the divine will and the human. It was our very act that formed the place in which to create man and administer to him the life in order to animate him. In the same way, our own acts will form the way to make him re-enter into our will. Therefore, it is the offering of our acts, armed with power, that makes us decide to give what the creature is asking of us. More so, since they are bearers of joys to us, but so much as to put us in feast. And who does not know that in the feasts one abounds in giving gifts never before given? Now, you must know that in no other thing created by us did we experience so much joy as in creating man. But do you know why? Neither to the heavens, nor to the sun, nor to the stars, nor to the wind, or to anything else, did we give the power to be able to give us our own heartbeat, our life, our love. If we gave, it was us giving, but they had no power to give us anything. Therefore, the joy of receiving no, does not exist in the other created things. At most, the joy of giving. And since there is no requital, the joy remains isolated and without company. On the other hand, in creating man, we gave him the power to give us our very life, our eternal heartbeat that palpitates and gives love. Such was our joy in giving this power to man, in feeling our heartbeat in him, and in placing our life at his disposal, so that he might love us with a divine life. So man was able to delight us and requite us with his joys, and joys which could stand before our own. Now, in seeing our life in him, in feeling our heartbeat palpitating in him, we experienced such joy as to remain ecstatic before a portent so great of the creation of man. And now, as you offer us these, our acts, we feel the joys and the sweet memory of his creation being repeated for us. Therefore, repeat your offerings if you want to give us joys and bend us to give our will reigning upon earth. Fiat. August 13th, 1933. Delirium and divine passion of the divine will for wanting to live together with the creature. Its new act and the divine painter. What it means to live in the supreme volition. I am always back in the arms of the divine will. It seems it longs to have me always with itself to give me its continuous life. And I long for it, to receive it. Without it, I would feel the ground missing under my feet, the heartbeat missing in my heart. And I would suffer a terrible hunger, with nothing else being able to give me even a crumb to satiate me. O oh, divine will, let us live together, if you want to make me happy, and so that you may find in me the happiness of your own life. 
but while my mind was wandering in the fiat, my beloved Jesus, making me his short little visit, told me, My blessed daughter, I could say it is a delirium, a divine passion of my will, wanting to live life together with the creature, giving its own life in exchange for the human littleness. But do you know why? You must know that my divine volition keeps ever ready a new act to give to the creature. But if she does not live with it, she does not acquire the habit of doing her acts united with my volition in order to make of them one single act and so it cannot give it. First, because she would not be worthy to receive it. Second, because she would not understand the value of the great gift that she is receiving, and would not have the virtue of absorbing it into herself as her own life. By living together with my divine will, one acquires new life, divine ways, celestial science, penetration of the most profound things. In sum, since my fiat is the teacher of teachers and the one who creates the highest science, it makes things known, not veiled but as they are in reality. Therefore, in living together with the creature, it does not want to keep her ignorant, but it instructs her. It gives her its surprises. It narrates to her its divine story, and this transforms her and renders her capable of receiving its new act, which my will wants to give her. And the soul, in each act that she does united with it, acquires a new prerogative of divine likeness. By living together with my volition, the soul is refined, embellished, and becomes in our creative hands, like the suitable canvas in the hands of the painter, such that the more beautiful and refined the canvas is, the more beautiful the image comes out, which he wants to paint on that canvas. It seems that his brushes and his colors acquire more art, become more skilled, rendering colors more vivid on a canvas that is well refined. So the canvas changes into an image that seems alive and acquires such value as to be admired by who knows how many peoples. Now, more than divine painter is my will, and it never tires of giving new beauty, sanctity, and new science and is there waiting for an act done together with it in order to enrich her, make itself known more, and make use of its divine brushes in order to elevate her to such height and rare beauty as to make her admired by who knows how many generations in such a way that all will call her blessed and whoever has the good of looking at her will feel happy. All the new acts that she has received from God, by virtue of her operating in my volition, will sing her praises, and hymning her will make her known as the most beautiful work of my divine fiat. It's wanting to lower itself to living with the creature, its divine delirium is a sign 
that it wants to do great things with her, and worthy of its creative power. Therefore, to live together with my fiat is the greatest fortune, and should be the delirium, the vehement passion, and the ambition of all. After this, I felt within me and outside of me the murmuring sea of the divine fiat. Oh, how sweet and gentle is its murmuring! It murmurs and it speaks. It murmurs and it caresses its beloved creature. It murmurs and it kisses her, and clasping her in its arms, it says to her, I love you, and I ask for love. There is nothing more beautiful, more pleasant, than being told I love you by a volition so holy, while it asks in return for the little love of the creature. I felt this divine murmuring flow as life in my whole being. And my sweet Jesus added, My daughter, do you want to know what it means to do my divine will and live in it? It is to know where one is, with whom one is dealing, what one can receive, and not to forget the good that one has received. These are all signs that the soul lives in my divine will. In fact, to say that she lives in it, and not knowing where the royal palace is that offers itself to be her dwelling, would be like not to appreciate it, because things, people, places, when they are not known, are not appreciated. To say, I live in the divine volition, and not to know it, is absurd. And if she does not know it, it is not a reality, but a way of speaking. While the first thing that my will does is to reveal itself, make itself known to the one who wants to live together with it. So, knowing where she dwells, she knows that she is dealing with so holy a will that wants everything in order to give her everything. Hence, she places herself in act of receiving its sanctity, its light, and she places herself in act of living of the goods of the one with whom she lives. Because, by knowing him, she no longer feels like lowering herself to her own human will. More so, since it is no longer her own. With this knowledge, the creature acquires the hearing in order to hear it, the voice to speak about it, the mind to comprehend it, the confidence in a divine manner in order to ask for everything and receive everything. So she does not ignore the goods that she possesses. On the contrary, she is all eyes to watch them, and she thanks the one who has lowered himself to live with her. Now, if anyone shall read these lines that I made you write, and will not comprehend what is written, and wondering will put in doubt truths so sacrosanct, as well as where the creature can reach, by living together with my will, it is a sign that he 
does not live with it. How can he comprehend it if he does not have within himself this life so holy? Has never experienced its delights? Has never listened to its beautiful lessons? And his palate has never savored this celestial food that my will is able to give. So they ignore what my fiat is capable of doing and giving. And if they ignore it, how can they comprehend it? When a good is not known, if one does not feel at least the dispositions for wanting to believe it, it brings blindness of mind and hardness of heart. And one can even reach the point of despising that good, which, for one who knows it and possesses it, forms his fortune and his glory and he would lay down his human life in order to possess the life of my fiat and its goods, which he has known. And because he knows it, he is all ears to listen to it. He is all eyes to look at it. He is all heart to love it. He is all tongue to speak about it. Even more, he would like to have, who knows how many tongues, to tell the good that he knows, the prerogatives of the one whom he possesses as life. Because his own tongue is not enough for him to be able to tell everything he knows. Therefore, when I want to give a good, a gift, especially the great gift of my will as life of the creature. The first thing I do is to make it known. I do not want to give the light and put it under a bushel, as if she did not have it, or give my goods and hide them, and as though bury them inside of her. Why give them? And if she does not know them, how could the poor creature correspond to me, love them and appreciate them? If I give, it is because I want for us to live life together and united to enjoy the good I have given to her. Even more, your Jesus makes himself the vigilant sentry in order to keep in custody what I have given to my beloved creature. So, to know means to possess. To possess means to know. For one who does not know, the truths become difficult and without life. Therefore, be attentive and enjoy what your Jesus has given you and made you know. Fiat. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 32, Part 11. Fiat. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.